are you organizing the digital media that you are gathering in your genealogy research? Is it simple yet robust? Well, a Family History Fanatics community member asked me about my digital file organization system, and we're going to talk about that next. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee and this is Family History Fanatics. If this is your first time here, welcome. This is a place where we help you learn about all things genealogy and have a lot of fun along the way. Today's question comes from one of our viewers who wanted me to show a little more details about my file organization system that she spied in the video about five reasons why I love Roots Magic. Well, thank you for asking. Let's dive in. Now, many of you really love organization, but for me, I'm not that, I like things to be organized, but I don't love organizing. Does that make sense? So the simpler my organization system is, the happier I am and the more likely I am to use that program. In the past, when I learned about organizing digital files, I was given the recommendation to create a spreadsheet. I was going to give some kind of strange code to my images. Then I was going to create a column in the spreadsheet that identified the names of all the people that were in that strangely identified code name for an image. And then I was going to describe it like you see here. What I soon found out is this is really complicated overly complicated, unnecessarily complicated. As soon as I lose this spreadsheet file, I'm toast. So I need to put an, something identifying into my images so that I don't lose data if I ever lose the backup file, which is another reason why I'm a big fan of creating photo books, caption photo books, or scrapbooks where the photos and the stories always stay together. But I digress. How do I organize my digital file? Well, before I go to my system, I want to tell you about someone else that we've had on our channel before, Randy Seaver. Now, Randy Seaver of Genia Musings has his own file organization system. His is more robust from mine, so I'll go ahead and tell you just a brief um, introduction to a system be sure to check the description for a link to the blog post of which covers all of the details about his organization system. I don't wanna say I don't like his, his one just doesn't work for me. I'll show you mine after I give you a quick introduction into his. Now, Randy organizes his files according to families. After he organizes, um, data into family files, then he goes and breaks it into um, documents, genealogy reports, and then into photographs. And then finally, he has a file naming structure that you can see in his blog post of how he identifies his photos. It has a lot of data in it and it works for him. I will give you a catalog the files that I have are small in number simply because my family was much smaller, so I didn't inherit a lot. So if you have a larger family with a lot of data to keep track of, this is definitely a system that I think is valuable. So I wanna go ahead and advise you to check it out. Now let's examine that file naming system. He puts the name of the key people in his file name, then the date, then the record type, and then any other information. Pretty handy. Unfortunately, one of the things that I discovered is that I like to sort my photos by chronological order. I can't quickly do that if I don't put the date first in my file naming structure. So let me show you my strategy. The first thing I do, because I really just have two branches. I have mom's line and dad's line. Now, eventually mom's line and dad's line is going to become somebody's grandma and grandpa, but for now this makes a whole lot of sense for me. Under mom's line and dad's line, I have two major photo folders. I have documents 
and I have photos. Where Randy had the genealogy reports, I would just take those and put them under documents. Again, it just makes things more simple for me, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Within the documents folder, under mom's folder, as well as dad's branch, I have the record type. So all the birth records are together, all the church records together, and so on and so forth. I'll show you an example here in a moment. And then I name my file differently depending on if it's a document or if it's an image of people and places and things. So if it's a document, then the file name will have the surname of the key individual and then their given name. And then I just put in the type of record at the end. So you'll see an example, Brown, Samuel, and then the type of record. And I have codes. MC, marriage record, DC, death certificate, CD, city directory, and so on and so forth. If it is a couple, then I will put the husband's last name, the husband's first name, and then I'll go ahead and put the wife's name after. So let me go ahead and show you a live example. Here you have one of the branches of my family tree and the various records that I have within that file folder. Now, if you have different types of records, you can have extra folders pertaining to those records. So if you have pension files, you can add a photo, uh, folder for that. If you have occupational records, you can have the folders. You have folders based on the content that you have for the family that you are blessed with their documents of. What I'm trying to say is don't create an empty folder. Create folders as you need them. Now within the folder, I then show you all of the images. These are death certificates. Yep, those are death certificates. And as you can see, I have the last name, the first name, and then the DC for death certificate. Now with photos, my process is a little bit different. Because again, I don't have a huge collection to maintain, I do group things by family um, if there is enough to break out to create a folder from. So I have a lot of photos from my parents, so they will be a family folder. But as you'll see in a moment, if I have the surname Marvin and I have 10 pictures of Marvin's, I'm not gonna create Marvin John, Marvin Ralph. I'm just gonna create Marvin. So if a family group has enough photos to warrant its own folder, then I go ahead and break it out. Then you have the question of, I have my dad and I have myself. So you have a parent, any of you a child. When does, uh, do I as an individual become have photos for myself, do I have it all of the photos for myself or are part of them with my family of my parents? Well, the answer is when I'm a child, my photos are with my parents. When I get married, I start my own folder. So let me show you a quick example. I have Robert and Penny Geisler, Robert and Helen Geisler, Zemstein, Robert and Clementine. But since I don't have enough photos for Marvin's and Claybaugh's, they don't get their own folder. And with the file name structures, again, I want to have the year, the month, the day, and then a description to go with it. Because what I found is I can solve genealogy mysteries in photographs when I sort photographs according to the chronological order. So an example would be something that looks like this. You see the year, you see the month and the day. If you don't have the day, just stop at the month. If you don't have the month and the day, just stop at the year. And then sometimes you have to put 1940s because it's your best guess for that family at that time period and that is perfectly acceptable. So here's an example. This is my photographs. You can see a number of the families that I have broken out, but then you also see the Zumstein file where there was just not a lot of photographs to break out. Then within some of the families, I have a child under that family. I maybe have 10 or 15 photographs, but I don't have enough to create a whole separate George Geisler and his wife Helen folder. I just put them under his father with his wife, his mother Evelyn. 
it's not a perfect system, but it works for me. And the reason why it works for me is because in that previous video, Roots Magic, Roots Magic organizes a lot of my media files, scrapbooks organize my media files, and so do sharing my photos on Family Search. Add a different slide. So the question of the day is, how do you organize your media files? Are you more like Randy Seaver? Are you more like me, where you have it adapt to meet your needs? Or do you have something entirely different? I can't wait to hear what you use or any further questions you have in the discussion underneath this video. Be sure to click that bell and hit subscribe if you like the content you find here on Family History Fanatics so you will be notified when there is another episode that goes live. You will also wanna go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. It's another way to know of new content that we put on our blog or our video channel as well as you'll get this free guide, 10 online genealogy resources that you have to try. And don't forget, we have over 200 and some odd videos for you to binge watch at your convenience. And we'll get you started with a video right now.